Warning, some of the topics discussed in this video may not be suitable for younger audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Arthur is one of my favorite shows, and even though I'm well above the age range for it, I just can't not watch it. And I don't think I'm alone in this. Since I figure myself to be such a big fan of the series, I thought it would be fun to make a video explaining this Arthur iceberg I found on Reddit. For those of you who don't know, an iceberg is a tier list of sorts, with well-known stuff about a topic at surface level and more obscure unknown information near the bottom. Before I begin, I'd like to give a shout out to Reddit user Slightly Quixotic, hope I'm saying that right, for creating the iceberg. Let's begin. The Snowball is one of the greatest mysteries of the show. In the season 1 episode, DW's Snow Mystery, her snowball disappears. In the end, she learns to move on, but has accused Arthur of taking it multiple times in future episodes. These are two songs from the episode, Arthur's Almost Live Not Real Music Festival. Not much else to say on this one, but this is one of the most memorable episodes from the series. Several celebrities and public figures have made appearances on the show. That's all I have to say, moving on. In almost every episode of the show, a character will have some kind of imagination sequence, whether it's a dream, nightmare, or fantasy. April 9th is a notable episode. It was made in response to the terrorist attacks on September 11th the previous year of this show's airing. In the episode, Lakewood Elementary catches on fire. The show was made to display how we all react to tragedy. This episode will be brought up again later down the iceberg. This is a reference to the episode Dad's Dessert Dilemma. In the episode, Arthur overloads his dad with requests for treats to make for school events. There is a running gag involving Mr. Appern and his obsession with cake. Arthur's Big Hit is one of the most well-known episodes in the series. In it, DW destroys a model airplane that Arthur spent a lot of time working on. In his frustration, he punches her. A frame of Arthur's fist before punching his sister became a meme. In the 2019 episode Mr. Rappern and the Special Someone, Mr. Rappern announces to his class that he is getting married. In the end, it is revealed to be to another man. This sparked some controversy in parts of the US, which we will discuss more in depth later down the iceberg. Postcards from Buster was a spin-off of Arthur that aired from 2004 to 2012. In the show, Buster traveled around the world with his father, Bo, who was a pilot. This show was both live action and animated. We will be discussing the show later down the iceberg. Spanky was the name of D.W.'s pet parakeet who died in So Long Spanky. This was the only episode he appeared in. The Great McGrady is an episode that deals with the lunch lady Mrs. McGrady and the kids learning she has cancer. It was later remade in season 24. We will discuss this episode again later on in the iceberg. Kate is a baby in the Reed family, and Pal is Arthur's pet dog. There are many episodes involving the two of them. They can understand each other, but not older characters. Besides that, I'm not sure what exactly it is the Yopi is trying to say in this entry. Maybe that's all? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'm not sure what this one could be talking about, but I guess this could be people on the show who claim to see aliens, like Buster for example, but let me know your thoughts. To celebrate the 10th season of Arthur, multiple easter eggs related to the number 10 were put in each episode. On the Arthur website was a sheet that viewers could print to mark off where they saw each easter egg. Those who were able to find at least 10 were then eligible to enter in a prize drawing, where three lucky winners would receive a recording of Buster to use for their answering machine. So while the obvious explanation for this entry might be the switch from traditional to flash in season 16, I think this might also refer to all the times the show switched animation over the years. One example where I think the animation took a dive in quality was from season 11 to season 12. It looks much cheaper. The stories were still very wholesome, 
but I feel the animation really makes a show. This was a made-up language by Arthur and Buster in the episode, Do You Speak George? The last letter of a word is moved to the beginning, and when the original first and last letter are both consonants, you put an I between them to make sure the word stays pronounceable. So for example, the phrase, thank you, becomes kathang uyo. This was the only episode to feature the language. The creator of Arthur, Mark Brown, has snuck his children's names into the books and into the show. This is a scene from the episode Binky's Music Madness. Binky listens to a song by the band The Bang on a Can All Stars and goes on a psychedelic experience. The clip has become a source for many memes. Moving on. This entry basically states that as the series goes on, the technology gets more modern. Not much else to say, so moving on. So I'm not 100% sure what they mean by this, but I think maybe that some of the Arthur characters' designs are not accurate of the animals they are based off of? Let me know what you think down below. Moving on. Arthur's Missing Pal is an Arthur movie. In it, Pal goes missing after Arthur forgot to feed him. I'm not sure what else to say about it, but it is notable for being done in CG rather than the show's usual traditional animation at that time. This refers to the episode DW's Backpack Mishap, in which DW mixes up her backpack at the swimming pool. In the end, it turns out to belong to Tommy Tibble, but due to the letters on his bag being worn out, she thinks it belongs to someone named Pomble. Lydia Fox is a character who was introduced in the season 14 premiere, The Wheel Deal. In the episode, Brain ends up injuring his leg while practicing free throws, and Lydia helps him adapt to life using a wheelchair. The character was created by Connor Gordon, who was the winner of the 2009 All Kids Can Character Search. This is the name of a movie that has been referenced a few times in the series. Not much else to say here, moving on. Lance Armstrong is a retired cyclist who has won several Tour de France titles from 1999 to 2006. In 2012, he underwent an investigation for doping. PBS decided to pull two episodes from rerun rotation that he guest starred in, and another that he has referenced. These episodes were the original version of The Great McGrady, Room to Ride, and Binky vs. Binky. The first two have not been broadcast since 2012, and the third since 2013. However, they are available to watch online. Arthur's Nose is the first book in the Arthur series. It is notable for the design of Arthur looking a lot different. He is not wearing any glasses and has a long slender nose. Basically this entry says that the show is not afraid to mention her show blood. In Vomitrocious we see George get a nosebleed, Bran gets a paper cut in Friday the 13th, Arthur says the winner of Deep Dark Sea and Arthur the Wrecker had to swear in blood, and the Tibble's Toe of DW Mars is made of blood. That's all the examples I can find, but I think you get the point. Moving on. I think this just refers to the sound effect that is heard before any imagined spot. This is a joke from the episode Arthur's Birthday. While at the party store, DW sees a square balloon. After asking how they get made, the employee replies to blow square breaths. Blow square breaths! Oh! Shelly is Binky's actual name which was revealed in the episode, What's in a Name? He was named after his great-grandfather, who was part of the circus. Not much else to say here, just that it's an interesting fact that adds more depth to Binky's character. Moving on. Carl is a character who was introduced in season 13. He has Asperger's syndrome and is a friend of George. He likes learning about trains and solving jigsaw puzzles. I think all of this entry is saying is that the show became a huge source of memes like the frame of Arthur's fist that I talked about early in the video. Moving on. Martin Spivak is a character Buster creates in his imagination in the episode Fitzy's breakup after his mother and her boyfriend split. He's thought to be an insurance salesman who is unpleasant. He has made appearances in future episodes, even hosting a TV show in the season 19 episode Buster isn't buying it. 
meaning that he's in fact now a real person in the Shadows universe and not imaginary. The Comic Creator was a game on the Arthur website that allowed users to make up their own scenarios using the Arthur characters. People took advantage of this, and soon many were using the game to make their own memes that involved the characters in very adult situations. This is likely why the game was removed from the site. Both Muffy and Francine have the same middle name, which is Alice. This is an episode of Postcards from Buster. In the episode, Buster travels to Vermont to learn about the production of maple sugar. While there, he meets a family of two lesbian parents. PBS decided not to air the episode, but it is available online. The green-tailed grebe is a rare species of bird spotted in Elwood City. They do not exist in real life and are actually based on marshland birds. There is a baseball team named after them in the show. It made its first appearance on the show in the episode For the Birds. In the episode Paradise Lost, we have an imagination spot where we see a teenage Kate walking an elderly pal. In the episode Sleep No More, Buster and his friends get to go to Pizza Land after his mom was asked to cover the grand opening for her newspaper. While there, Buster tries to compete in a pizza eating competition. This is from the episode of the same name. In it, Binky is accused of defacing the school grounds with graffiti. In the end, it turns out the band Binky was doing it for promotional purposes. You Are Arthur is the name of an episode where Arthur lets the viewer see what a day is like for him. The episode then shifts to a first person view. The events in the episode include a 3K race. The episode Mr. Rappard and the Special Someone was banned in the state of Alabama. A screening was held with WGBH's permission at a wedding party on June 15, 2019 at First United Methodist Church in Birmingham. In case you were unaware, the show takes place in the fictional Elwood City. The location of Elwood City in the real world has never been revealed on the show. However, back in 2020, the official Arthur Twitter account confirmed that the city is in Pennsylvania. In the episode The Contest, shows like South Park, Beavis and Butthead, and Dr. Katz were all parodied. Arthur is well known for parodying several types of media. This refers to the episode Spoiled Rotten. In it, Muffy tries to prove to Francine that she is not spoiled after buying a pair of shoes that Francine saved money for. Muffy accuses her of being a richest, someone who is prejudiced against the rich. But you are a richest! A what? A richest! Someone who's prejudiced against rich people! There's no such word! I think this entry just states that Arthur and his friends are in the third grade for most of the series. However, this iceberg was made before the special Arthur's First Day was released, which showed him entering the fourth grade. South Sudan is a country in Africa that has been independent since 2011. However, at the time of the making of the episode, In My Africa, it had not yet gained its independence. What Scared Siloan is an episode from Season 3 where Siloan gets frightened by a sound in the woods. It is later revealed to be Mrs. Wood's dog, Perky. The OP thought this episode was spooky and involved some supernatural creatures like Kappa, but I don't have much else to say about it, so moving on. The parents of Tommy and Timmy Tibble have never made an appearance on the show, and instead are being raised by their grandmother. Their mother is said to be away traveling the world in DW's backpack mishap, but nothing is known about their father. This is a character from the episode Prunella Gets It Twice. He has a resemblance to Binky. This is a reference to the episode Buster the Myth Maker. In the episode, Buster is showing Arthur the website where he gets all of his stories from. One of the claims is that the actor Kieran Moody from Snowboard Patrol has six fingers. This is an episode about the brain, who is not superstitious, having a bout of bad luck. 
I'm not sure the meaning of the century other than that. Moving on. Maria is a character who has been around since the beginning of the series, and only began to speak in season 19, where it was revealed that she has a speech impediment. The Green Flash is a phenomenon told to Arthur by Prunella in Arthur's New Year's Eve. It's said that at the midnight of New Year's, a Green Flash happens. If it does not, the whole year must be repeated. On the show, there are relationships between two different species. To give you some examples, Mr. Rapper, who's a rat, married an aardvark. And for the character Emily, her father is a monkey, and her mother is a rabbit. The Lucky Pencil is a pencil said to bring good luck. It first appeared in the episode, Arthur's Lucky Pencil. Arthur brought it along for the Virtual Goose Championship, and marked DW with it before her operation in Operation DW. Simply put, it is never revealed why Buster's parents split. In the episode Arthur and the Real Mr. Rapburn, the kids are nervous about their new teacher for the year. When they ask Brunella about him, she states that he is a vampire. I guess some people think the crossing guard from that one episode was actually evil, but I think he was just giving Brain and Arthur a hard time. He even apologized in the end if his teasing got out of hand. Let me know what you think. This is a username of a player in the game, Virtual Goose, from the episode, Sue Ellen Gets Her Goose Cook. It is revealed to belong to Emily and Mahoyolan at the end of the episode. This is a common phrase used on 4chan to talk about moderators, who are also known as janitors, for abusing power or being overly sensitive. The phrase is often associated with a photo of the character Mr. Morris, who is the school janitor. The Cootie Catcher was a fortune-telling game given to Prunella on her half-birthday in the episode Miss Fortune Teller. The kids use it to make decisions for them. In the episode The Fright Stuff, we see that a family of ghosts inhabit Castle Manor. There is a mother, a father, and a daughter. It is unknown how they died. This was the only episode they appeared in. I'm not sure why this is so far down in the iceberg, because I think it's common knowledge at this point. But anyway, political commentator Steven Crowder was the voice of the brain from season 5 to season 6 in 2000 to 2001. In The Great Sock Mystery, Hal and Kate try to find out where missing socks go. They learn about the sock exchange, an organization where pets buy and trade socks to stimulate the economy. It is a parody of the stock exchange. It was shut down in the Great Wind Rush. Moving on. In the episode Bleep, Arthur is seen building another Bell X-1 model airplane. This time, Arthur drops it in shock from hearing DW curse. I guess Arthur will never get to build a Bell X-1 without it somehow getting destroyed. Moving on. This is a line from the episode Arthur's Substitute Teacher Trouble. In the episode, the kids have Mr. Rapper and sister as a sub while he is ill. They reminisce about past substitutes, and we see a flashback to a sub that would mumble. When Buster asks Arthur what she said, he replies that he doesn't know and that Buster's ears are bigger than his. Not sure what the OP is trying to say with this entry? Let me know what you think. Moving on. I can't find any evidence for this one, and I'm not sure what the OP is trying to say. But the Love Ducks was a show Arthur discovered in the episode, That's a Baby Show. He ends up loving the show, but does not want anyone to know about it in fear that he will get teased by his peers. The show has a very psychedelic presentation. Fartina is a Finnish folk group whose song Matali Amushti appeared in the episodes Binky Rules and Meet Binky. Not much else to say about it, I think it's quite catchy. Moving on. In the episode Muffy's Art Attack, she decides to hold an art show. Bailey, her butler, ends up making some art for the show. The OP explains that his art is unsettling, and we don't see much of Bailey's artistic side. Moving on. 
Sue Owen's diary is an item that has made an appearance in some episodes. Not much is known about the contents, but that she has said some nice things about Arthur. In the episode April 9th, it was destroyed in the fire at Lakewood. I think this entry just states that time travel exists in the series. The only time I think we ever saw it was in the episode DW's Time Travel, where she and her imaginary friend Nadine traveled through time. George's antlers are his most distinctive trait. They cause him to get stuck in his locker sometimes, and sometimes he'll also knock things over. He also can get teased by them. I don't really know much else to say about this one. In the episode of the same name, Buster believes that his favorite baseball team, the Greaves, are cursed, and he is to blame. Not much else to say here, moving on. And that is going to do for part one of this iceberg. We are 20 minutes in now, and this video has taken a lot of time and energy to make. Also, we are now at the halfway point, so I thought this would be a good point to stop. So tune in next time, and I will cover the last half of this iceberg. Thank you very much for watching.